there a role for obtaining that very valuable data in the in the post marketing setting? You know, not necessarily with registries or less rigorous ways, but in randomized studies that can occur while companies are collecting revenue to help mm -hmm. pay for those studies. <laughs> and I think part of it is that before you get your first dollar in the door, it's a billion dollars in seven, ten, fifteen right. years out. Well, I've put before Congress this time, along with the Infectious Disease Society of America, we have put forth the concept of limited population antibiotic drug. And that one um, would be, you may do a very tiny development program, maybe a couple hundred patients for a drug to treat a resistant or drug-resistant organism. But you get on the market and then you have a logo and you have instructions on the label that so said this is only to be used for this purpose. And that would provide good antibiotic stewardship, and it would also um, allow, and then the company, if they wanted, they could continue developing the drug, because current antibiotic drug development programs are like 5,000 people in non-inferiority trials. So it is a, a major uh, undertaking, which that's why most companies got out of business. So I think we have to figure out a way to make the costs lower. And that's what, I'm working with Laura Esterman and other people on because it doesn't have to cost that much. I mean, academia is in some ways in charge of the study sections and so forth. You're not completely helpless on what the research agenda might be, although you may feel totally helpless. Uh, and I think that in some ways, you know, there has to be more scholarly endeavors across the whole range of uh, human biology, not just, you know, the very reductionistic. Level. And that's not a good answer, I know, but in some ways I'm saying, you know, everyone is somewhat, everyone has to own this problem. <laughs>